Hi, everybody. I am Jen Johnson, and you are listening to Thought by Thought Healing, where I talk about everything related to chronic pain and chronic symptoms. I come at this from a Christian perspective, and so if that's important to you, then you should definitely subscribe to my channel. And if you are listening on podcast platforms, I would love if you would leave me a review. That is what gets um, this hope essentially out there, which is why I run this channel. There is so much hope to recover from chronic pain and other chronic symptoms. But I will say that most of the information and the tools out there are geared towards people who are in chronic pain. And so that's why I'm mostly excited about today's interview with Fiona Symington, who also has a um, a podcast and episode on Curable and on Living Proof. And so if you want to look at those, they will be in the show notes. But first of all, Fiona is just lovely. And this was just a really enjoyable conversation Um, And we were able to connect before starting, before hitting that record button. And it was um, just really, and it it was just encouraging. Um, So I hope that you enjoy it, especially if you have fatigue as one of your symptoms to hear how she was able to just take those tools and really be able to apply them to a symptom that seems to be slightly different than what all the information out there is talking about. There is so much hope to recover. And I hope that you get that from this interview that I have with her. So enjoy, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, Fiona, thank you for being here with me today. You're very welcome. It's lovely to be here. So Fiona has done an interview on Curable and Mm -hmm. also for Living Proof, and so I think the first one I heard was the living proof one, actually. Okay. For people who want to watch any of your other stuff, can they watch the Curable one if they don't have a membership to Curable? Uh, yeah, I believe all the podcasts are available for free. So yeah, that's that's an audio, uh, just you know, something to listen to, but it's I, I, I believe it's available publicly, yeah. Okay, great. Okay. And one of the reasons I'm just really excited to have you in particular on is because one of your symptoms is chronic fatigue. And my story has many different types of symptoms. And I know yours does also. Um, But, um, and I've experienced fatigue, but not as a chronic symptom. And so um, it's, it's, and we talked about this briefly before, before we started this video, but it's really I imagine very disheartening and discouraging and confusing for people whose primary symptom is chronic fatigue because all of the tools out there are pointed towards people with chronic pain, which is great for those of us with chronic pain, but um, I'm excited to hear your experience of that. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. And I'm very happy to share in the sense that I think that, as you say, everything is directed towards pain and it's, it's very difficult to know how to adapt some of the ideas towards other symptoms and and if you can dare to get your hopes up and actually trust that that this might help you as well so yeah it's always lovely to talk about it yeah thank you so let's just start by you telling us a little bit about your story pre-healing um whatever mm-hmm. you think would be pertinent whether it's the the perfect storm or not but what what yeah, brought so- the problem up? I, I started having problems actually at the age of, of 11 and I'd I'd fallen off a horse um, a few months before and, and and I'd been knocked out when I fell off. It was uh, it was quite a bad fall, but it wasn't I didn't break any bones. I didn't have any sort of really serious injuries, um, but things didn't feel right. And I, I sort of had um, pain on and off. It sort of would come and go for a few months. Uh, and now I would also say that there was there was uh quite a lot of stress within the family my my dad had been made redundant um several times and there were some other things that you know that not shouldn't really have happened in terms of um yeah I think I think whenever we do this work it's always it's always good to look back at well what could have been the trigger and I certainly think that but by 11 there were there were a few things that had gone wrong that that had been traumatic and and this this pain came and went and then um a few months later, I, I woke up in pain and that was it. It didn't go away from there. Um, and really very quickly over the course of about a week, I, I was finding it too difficult to walk. Um, I know we got a pair of crutches to help me. Um, I started to find school impossible. Um, I was sent to uh, various different hospitals. I tried uh, pain management programs. And the idea was to try and get me mobile as quickly as possible and 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 
very much they did tests and they sort of said well there's there's nothing physically wrong there's no reason why you should be in pain which at 11 and 12 and then 13 I I had no idea what was going on and I had expected to go to the doctor and to be told actually this is what's happened and and you know either some medication or some physiotherapy and you'll be fine so that was very distressing but for those early years pain was the problem and it was pain in my left knee and my back and my hip um and it was it was severe pain it was it was very disabling um and then really fast forward through to uh when i was in my early 20s i went off to university i i was really quite significantly disabled in a lot of ways uh, i was using a wheelchair was struggling to sit struggling to walk uh, everything was a struggle it was it's been very very difficult and i'd had all sorts of interventions and nothing had really worked and all the medication i'd taken hadn't really worked and then at university, um, I went off to to do a course that I thought I was going to love and I was really looking forward to it. And then in actual fact, um, there were another series of, of, of really difficult things that happened in, in my personal life. Um, and my pain got a lot worse uh, overnight. I woke up one morning thinking, hey, mm. something's, something's different again. And I dropped out of university to, to try and manage that and realized um, I took a year out and and I realized in that time that something else was going on in the sense that I just didn't have any energy. Um, and in fact, what I did originally was um, I think I think I got about three months into that year off and I I took a holiday. I decided, right, I'm burnt out. I've been in pain for a long time. I felt traumatized by everything that had happened with the pain. And I thought, I just need to take a little bit of time, take care of myself. Um, and, and then actually, you know, I'll have some energy again. And so I went on holiday and I remember on this holiday, I kept falling asleep um, and I was falling asleep. At, I, mean, I remember there was a sort of lunch table spread out and I, I sat down next to it and put my my head on my arms and I fell asleep. And I think I just slept all afternoon and everybody else was sort of eating lunch around me. And then you know they went swimming and it was it was very overwhelming. And I went home thinking this isn't right when you go on holiday and you're in a nice place and it's sunny and you're supposed to come home feeling better and I, I was used to the pain but I I didn't have really any experience with that kind of fatigue um, and I think that um, initially I still had a sense of I'm burnt out I'm going to recover uh, and I I very quickly found it difficult to exercise I was I was always um I think there were sort of there were times when uh, with the pain I I could hardly walk at all, and then there were there were sort of times where it varied, and uh, up until um, that point, I think the sort of three or four years up until that point, I had been starting to be more mobile. I'd been doing more things. I'd been walking more, oh, okay. still in pain, but but just had had much better better mobility, um, and and so I had a sense of right. I'm going to sit on an exercise bike and and try and cycle for five minutes to give myself some energy. And I couldn't do it. And I very, very quickly realized that not only could I not do it in that moment and I felt really bad, but a couple of days later, my energy would crash really badly. Um, and I remember trying to to go swimming because somebody had said, well, you know, swimming is a very easy, it takes all the pressure off your joints. It's very soothing. You feel very relaxed in the water. So I started going swimming and uh, and had all these ideas about well i'm going to really benefit from this and i love being in the water um and and again very quickly realized sort of two days later i would be sitting there crying just feeling so acutely exhausted and and actually i pushed on with that too much i think at the time um and it it got quite frightening because i think there were some days where I would fall asleep and I, I would sleep all night and then I would sleep all afternoon and I would wake up and I can remember at worst thinking I can't open my eyes because I'm so exhausted um, and, you know, needing to go and use the bathroom and, and having to lie there and thinking, well, I, I just don't have the energy to get up and having to wait half an hour, an hour, trying to sort of gather all the energy within me um, to get myself up. And it was very frightening and i i knew then that well this is this is something different and and that, that developed into you know i got a diagnosis of me i actually got a diagnosis of fibromyalgia as well from a rheumatologist okay. Okay. um yeah so so that then was my life where i had had pain for a long time found that very difficult on its own but then also had this this fatigue which then lasted for uh, for 14 years and um, for those listening, ME is, I think in the United States, we say CFS, is that correct? Yes, I think the two terms, I mean, I think there's a lot of feeling within the ME community that they don't like the term CFS, but it certainly gets oh. used in research and by medical professionals. And there's some patients who would say that they'd rather use the term CFS, but it's it's basically the idea is it's it's 
very uh, significant fatigue and it's crashing. Usually there's a crash kind of a couple of days after any kind of exertion. Um, and, and everybody, you know, there's different levels of it. I would have said that I was moderately affected, but I was the severe and the moderate. So I couldn't work. Um, I couldn't, I mean, I missed family weddings and christenings and parties and and I struggled to socialize and I had carers come in and, and uh, help me wash my hair and help cook for me. And um, so basic tasks were really, really exhausting. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You are early on in this story, you mentioned um, school being really difficult. And I'm, and I'm wondering, did that have to do with, I'm predicting that maybe it was, was it brain fog? Was it? Um, so in those early days, it was, it was pain in fact, but okay. I, I, I ended up because I had to drop out of university when the fatigue um, struck, I, I ended up, I was, I was pretty determined to finish my degree and I studied at home. And it took me five years. And at that point, brain fog was an issue. And I i mean, particularly the last couple of years, I just felt myself declining from having to make that effort to concentrate. Um, and, and it was it was really tough. But yes, it was certainly that was more as, a, as an adult rather than I think when I was a child, it was much more the pain was just so bad. OK, OK. I asked because people don't talk about brain fog that much. But mm, I had yeah, a absolutely. Terrible time right. with brain fog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and then you've, so you've got this diagnosis of ME and, and what was that like? Just, I think looking back emotionally on that to oh. get that, um, was, there I mean, I think, I think there's such a sense and I know it's the same with pain, but there's such a sense of, of, of being told we'll go away and, and, and good luck with the rest of your life because we can't do anything. Yeah. And, and I think already I'd had such severe pain and there'd been such a sense of, I'm on my own with this and I don't know how to live with such severe pain. And I think adding in the fatigue, it was just desperate. I mean, there were, real, I think I sort of got through it a day at a time because I, if I looked at the future, it was very frightening. Um, and I, I remember sitting there thinking, well, how am I supposed to make friends and, and have relationships and, and, you know, I wanted to build a career and, and have children and I, everything, every aspect of life that I looked at in the future, I would think, well, this doesn't work. There is no way of making a life when I'm so restricted. And and, and what am I? I remember thinking, what am I supposed to do with myself? You know, that I I knew I really couldn't um, continue with studying beyond my undergraduate degree, and even that was was so hard. And it was a sense of well you're just left I mean what am I supposed to do I tried um volunteering for one year I used to go just for two two hours a, a for um one morning a week and I had to stop because the exhaustion was mm. so bad I just I, I wasn't reliable I couldn't manage to turn up every week I made silly mistakes when I was there which were you know, because I was so exhausted and I, I was doing so little the rest of the week anyway but I was still too tired to do that yeah yeah so it sounds like I mean, you've already got all these chronic symptoms and, and fatigue, and then you get a diagnosis. And instead of it being relieving, which it never is, um, there's an additional fight or flight trauma response, um, yeah. or tra there's, there's something traumatic is happening. Um, yeah. In yeah. that and I think I think the the only good good thing about a diagnosis was it it put me in touch with other people with the same symptoms and at the time okay that was an enormous comfort but I think now looking back there's also you're you're going to be coming across people so other people in the, those communities whether it's pain or fatigue saying to you well I've been in, in this position for this many years and I you know there is no cure and, and it's awful and 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 I I was part of a community of friends who there was a lot of positivity there was a, a lot of support they were incredible people but it's just inevitable that you are watching other people suffer and that's also traumatic yeah yep absolutely I really struggle with diagnoses in, just in general <laughs> just feel like they they slap on just another layer of fight or flight um yes. okay so and then at some point in time, you found you found hope. Um, can you just talk about how that came about for you and what that was like? Yeah, I, I love talking about this because I still look back and I think, how did this happen, really? I, yeah. I'd spent many years sort of I tried different medications and we went to sort of different alternative practitioners and nothing helped. And I I did not want to be. I, did, I didn't want anybody to sort of push something on me that was not going to help me. And and I think there's charlatans out there who want your money. They want to tell you that yeah. they're going to cure you. And they, they, they sometimes, you know, they managed to get a lot of money out of people. So I was very suspicious, but I started to get 
pretty desperate actually the older I got it was just very very difficult and I used to go on um I used to spend quite a lot of time on my phone because I was in bed and on my own a lot and I was on Instagram and uh, adverts kept popping up for curable and initially I I just looked at them and I thought this is offensive this is ridiculous it's stupid it's not going to help me I know it all I know what they're trying to sell me um but I was desperate and these these adverts kept coming up I mean they just kept popping up and they started to sort of include testimonials of people saying actually try this because it has changed my life and I because I was desperate I almost had this moment of like right I'm going to buy this and I'm going to do it and I'm going to give it everything so I can prove it's stupid and it doesn't work um and I sort of thought if at least if I give it my all I will walk away knowing I've tried and I've I've yeah I did embrace it and of course actually deep down I I really desperately hoped that it would help me but Mm -hmm. it is very very difficult to get your hopes up but I I I did it I Mm -hmm. I basically um, I decided I was I was not going to push through. It was very important to be to not push myself physically. So I thought I'm going to almost take a step back and do less. And I'm going to spend as much time as I can engaging with the exercises, seeing if I seeing if this works from the inside out. Uh, and that that's what I did. And, and basically um, about three weeks. And I think it was I realized, no, this is this is changing me. This is this all it resonated right from the beginning, and which was a real surprise because I thought I was going to hate it. But yeah. it resonated immediately. I knew this was going to change things. I didn't really fully expect to completely recover. That was that was okay. that for so far away. Mm. I'd had by that point, you know, 25 years of symptoms um, and 14 mm. years of the ME uh, in particular. But but six weeks down the line, I had to sort of, I had to accept that no, this worked, and I was, I was absolutely recovering, and I was going to be fine, and it was my world just completely tipped upside down. <laughs> wow! So there's so much in there. So when you, <laughs> um, three weeks in, mm. you started realizing, oh, this is it. Is it? Did you start? Did you start seeing? Uh, what made you realize that this was going to work? Well, do you know, actually, it was one weekend, what was so funny, and I still look back at this, and I think it was amazing, because I I had a dog that I had I had got with an ex, and I couldn't look after my dog, I obviously couldn't walk her, my mum had helped a lot, my ex had helped, and, and on this occasion, a, a dog walker had come to the door to pick her up, to take her out for me, and this was this was one weekend, so I it was too early to really know what was going on. And he looked at me and he said, you're getting better, aren't you? And he'd known me. I mean, he'd seen me out in a wheelchair and um, mobility scooter. And he knew me as somebody who was very housebound, really. But but he looked at me, he said, he said, you're getting better. And I just I looked at him. I said, what, what's made you say that? And he said, you look completely different. Because I, I used to be very pale at times. I used to look very unwell. And he said, your colours completely changed and your eyes look different. And I remember at the time being quite sort of freaked out by this. But I think three weeks in, it was because everything I was learning about how the brain generates symptoms, I was suddenly spotting that, okay, hang on, I I was expecting to wake up feeling tired today, and it's suddenly not like that. And then, and then I've had energy in the morning, and then okay, some fatigue has hit, but it's, why did I then have energy in the morning, unless these all these ideas Mm. are correct. So it just started clicking. So you started seeing shifts that Mm, were kind of indicating I think so so, yeah I love that somebody else saw a change yes yeah and my my parents were on holiday they I'd I'd almost kind of deliberately they they I have a sister who lives in Australia so they'd gone off for three weeks to see her and I think it had been really important that I start this when they were gone because I didn't want any pressure from anybody even even sort of you know them being hopeful for me I didn't want anybody else to, to know about it. And so yeah. they came back and 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 they came back. And again, my mum said one of the things she noticed immediately was just my colour had completely changed. And, and I mean, that was th- that was three weeks in. That wasn't sort of six weeks in when I would have said, no, I'm completely recovered. It's just, yeah, it, all these changes that happened and, and very re- physical changes, you know? Yeah. So did you just use the curable apps then? Or like the I curable did. app or did so you I, I just used I just used curable and the only thing I sort of supplemented it with at, it, at the end really was um Alan Gordon who I think produces such wonderful material and I mean some a lot of it's free mm-hmm. and then he's now written a book and he's got some YouTube mm-hmm. videos and um there were a couple of videos that I watched of his that just really made everything fall into place but um mm-hmm. but yes it, it curable was what I had access to at the time so so it in um 
Well, okay. I want to go so many directions. <laughs> so <laughs> let, I do want to make sure that we hit on the idea that even curable, although they often use the word symptoms, um, mm -hmm. they, 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 it is still geared towards pain. Um, yes. so how, how did you, and just speaking to the people out there who are seeing all this material for pain and there's, yeah. you know, this disheartening um, and layered with just what you just said about uh, something about it's scary to hope. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now you've got this extra layer of, but this is for people in chronic pain and you want me to hope and even start changing my expectations around my symptoms. How did you, can you give a couple examples or even one of just how you took the material for pain yeah. and adapted it to you? I think, so what was really interesting was that I'd always seen myself as somebody who I, I'd read sort of research papers on pain and I'd, I'd sort of tried to keep up with, with theories around pain that I used to think was stupid and I didn't agree with which is you know the the brain can generate pain and so when I started curable I I couldn't believe that they were explaining things in a way that I I, I didn't really know some of the things that they were explaining which was a shock mm -hmm. but it was a really good shock mm -hmm. it was good for me to to, to understand that I'd actually got a, a, the wrong understanding of some of this science actually mm -hmm. and they explained things so clearly and so well that that actually your brain can generate all sorts of symptoms and very severe ones it can break it can make you very very ill um and they explained it so beautifully mm. that i and it, and it started to resonate very quickly that i remember thinking well okay it makes sense to me that my brain is generating the pain that i've had and i could one of the biggest the most helpful things was that i'd had so many years of pain there had been good and bad times and it was sort of that thing of well you know why would it why does it change unless the brain is involved so so that made sense but then i thought well if i've got this brain that that is so good at generating pain what are the chances with my fatigue that there's this sort of mystery physical abnormality with me that is then throwing up fatigue and i think one of the things with with cfsme is actually there's there's not a lot that that uh, not a lot in the research that explains you know this is why you've got fatigue and there's all these theories about the immune system and mitochondria and now there's there's theories or sort of micro blood clots and um it really there's there's lots and lots of different ideas but there's no real sense of this is exactly why physically people are getting this condition and getting fatigued and i'd had um a series of viruses in fact as well before i started getting this fatigue so i'd always thought well there's my evidence that mm. this is something wrong with my body it my body was just damaged by these viruses or it reacted to them it, you know there's a sort of genetic susceptibility that means that things went wrong from that point but I think it just started with saying if I'm if my body's good at generating pain and is doing so it, the most simple explanation for the fatigue is that it's my brain generating it as well and and I think that from there mm. Every time I went through any of these exercises and I heard the word pain, I would just think, okay, how does this apply to my fatigue? Can I do some work around if I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling really super exhausted and awful, can I just stop and take a step back and watch what's going on in my body? Where do I feel it? What emotions might I be feeling? Um, you know, is there anything that might have made my brain feel unsafe? And uh, can I can I then do some journaling and think about my emotions? Um, can I think about, you know, over the last week, has there been a, a time in the day where actually I did have some energy? Because if you've got something inherently broken in your body, you're not going to have that variation. You're not going to have days where you do have better energy because if something's broken, it's broken. It doesn't it doesn't sort of change in that way. But right. if something's been generated by the brain, you you know, you absolutely do get you can get a really bad day. You can get a little bit of a better day. And so it was it was just kind of it's really not sort of more 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 complex than every step that you might do for for pain try and just substitute the word pain for for whatever your symptom you know chronic symptom is and 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 diving deep and saying what is my you know what am I feeling right now am I frightened am I angry am I sad is something needing expressing if I try and express it will that make the symptoms change at all if I distract myself will that make the symptoms change at all so yeah it I think it's really important not to over complicate it but it it does take a bit more you have to you have to adapt things you have to play around and you have to trust your own instincts because that's it's so, the, all of this work is so much about listening in um, and, and maybe starting to do that for the first time ever so yeah 
Yeah. And, w- and when you say listening, um, what do you, what do you mean? And I ask that because for years I listened to my symptoms yes. <laughs> and my symptoms told me don't move, don't walk, yes. use yeah. the wheelchair on Thanksgiving to go shopping. Yes. Um, well, <laughs> Black Friday, um, you know, and so what, what do you, can you unpack that a little bit? What do you mean? Yeah. By so I think rather than, because I think I was the same that I think that you can't help it's it's natural when you've got horrible symptoms you are going to be paying attention to those and i think that's a really hard concept for people to sort of accept yeah. because there's a, there's a sense of wanting to say no no i i've got a life other than my illness and i'm not i'm not just sort of being irrational and focusing too much inwards but actually in reality if you're in pain of course of course you're going to look at it and if you've got fatigue of course you're going to say I'm feeling really exhausted actually that's the most important thing in this moment I'm going to go and lie down so so it's not for me it wasn't about symptoms it was about feelings and I always the funny thing with this work is that I always thought I'm I'm quite a sort of emotionally intelligent person I know about feelings I know what I'm feeling and this is where I sort of found this these ideas so offensive originally because I thought well I'm a sensitive caring clever person I know what I'm feeling but actually did I know what I was feeling no I didn't know what I was feeling um and actually particularly sort of negative feelings and I think that that's that's what it's about tuning into it's about saying if I really sit with myself what has maybe been triggered what 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 is going on sometimes there's feelings hiding behind feelings and and again it doesn't have to be this work doesn't have to be over complicated but but just starting to think okay what might have uh, sort of made this my brain react in this moment and and throw up symptoms and and really being not even just recognizing it but saying okay can I allow myself to just sit and feel that and what does it actually feel like what does you know if I'm feeling angry about something where is that in my body what does it feel like does it have a color or a shape and I I struggled with that when I really started doing this work I thought I don't know how to describe where is the anger in my body? What does it feel like? I, I was completely flummoxed hmm. by that, actually. So that's been a process of of learning to really get in touch with my own feelings and feeling them very deeply, I guess. And yeah. Did that just take practice for you? Let's say yeah. you're feeling. Yeah. I, and I, yeah. I, and I think that there's quite a lot of negativity around sort of I see because I'm now studying health psychology and I look at things like there's research paper on Uh, papers on fibromyalgia and about how a lot of people with fibromyalgia have great difficulty identifying their feelings and and it seems Mm -hmm. to stop there and it doesn't seem to be there doesn't seem to be any work on okay we need to take people with with this problem whatever their diagnosis is because they might not be diagnosed with fibromyalgia it might be something else pain of some sort and and you know it is and and one of the one of the exercises you know it's a simple thing to start doing but one of the exercises that was separate to curable and this actually sort of came in later when I'd recovered but it was still very very important and it was just somebody saying three times a day just stop and try and work out what you're feeling and and you can almost even print off um charts of emotions mm-hmm. online which for me again that was a, a you know really valuable to do and just to just if you're finding it really difficult just literally look at the list of feelings and say okay I think I'm feeling this now what does it feel like in my body do I need to go and sit and write write these feelings out? Do I need to go and connect with somebody? Do I need to go for a walk? And I think that, yeah, I I very firmly believe that there's a lot more that we could be teaching people about. Um, you know, no shame. There's lots and lots of people who who have not been brought up to be in touch with their feelings, unfortunately. But yes, regular practice of kind of what am I feeling? What does that what does that actually feel like? It would just help so many people, and it, it starts to change so much within your body when you do that. Yeah. Two things about that. Mm-hmm. One, th- that what you're talking about, I've heard it called alexithymia or yes. alexithymia. Yeah, yeah. I've heard, I never know how to pronounce that, but yeah. I've heard that. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's so, yeah. I I mean, I have a, a little emotion wheel over here. And and when yeah. I have clients, I often send a, a printable version of it because, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I remember reading that sometimes people in chronic pain um, aren't able to identify their feelings. And I thought, oh yeah, interesting. Cause I'm, I labeled myself as emotionally intelligent prior to all this healing. And Mm -hmm. then when it, then when it came down to it, I was like, wow, I actually, I actually don't know how I feel. I'm, I'm confusing how I feel for the wrong emotion and feelings. And so 
yeah, taking quite a bit of time to, to write and discover what is, what's the emotion under this one. And wait, am I mislabeling this and, and all that kind of yeah. work. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing you mentioned earlier, maybe like five minutes ago, is um, you were just talking about micro clots and kind of um, a lot yeah. of the, the um, fears maybe that you had that you were getting through research that maybe this is the thing I had mm-hmm. um, for anybody listening that has also read all that, all that mm-hmm. material uh, from our own Googling. <laughs> yes. What words of encouragement do you have for how to I don't know, transition because there, there is very little information about mind body syndrome out there. Um, and there is a lot of information that's really scary. Yeah. Um, so any thoughts that you have on how to let go of some of that stuff? I mean, I think the most important thing about this work is that all it will ever say to you is your symptoms are real and, and real in the sense that you can end up picking up abnormalities in scans and tests and and Mm -hmm. and I see people getting very confused and very upset about that because by saying this is you know symptoms of mind body symptoms they'll people get very much very stuck on but hang on there's been this research showing this and this and this and it, it is very very hard to kind of shift from that position I think to saying you know this isn't threatening actually this is this is saying that your symptoms are real and i very much think that you know with mind body symptoms the body is part of it so absolutely there can be physical abnormalities and i actually have a connective tissue disorder so i still technically have a problem with my body in the sense that my ligaments are not Hmm. um sort of you know rigid i guess as everybody else there is a problem i'm very hypermobile but that doesn't mean to say that, you know, my brain was generating a lot of my pain and, and and it wasn't my fault. It's not anybody's fault when you get these symptoms. It is something that brains do. It protects us. It's a it's a really human normal. I don't like the word normal, but 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 it is. It's like, you know, so many people um, experience symptoms that are generated by the brain. And for some people, it'll just be a minor stress headache or a, an upset stomach, right. um, something like that. Right. And it's just that for some some of us we end up with these much more severe symptoms which which stick around and are very disabling um but by looking into this work it gives you there is then hope of getting better and i think i was always waiting for some kind of pill or medication or treatment that was going to save me and and i remember doing this work mm-hmm. early on and thinking if if it's a case that my brain was generating my symptoms that's really hard to come to terms with that that my first reaction is to feel ashamed and there's a lot of sh- mm. shame that you know i've had to work through that it comes up still it's very painful and and i particularly i mean i i had symptoms for so long and i think well if i'd have found this these ideas sooner i i, I didn't i spent years being disabled that i didn't need to be suffering essentially it's very very difficult but um yeah i mean it's it is yeah it is it is such a human process and and the body is uh you know the symptoms are real and it's worth if this if your symptoms are mind body generated you don't have to wait for research you don't have to wait for some external person to come along and 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 save you which you know obviously with with fatigue there's a huge sense of well that's never going to happen anyway because we've been trying for years to work out what's Mm. going on but this is your Mm. chance to have some control and to play around with symptoms. And I always, I've, I'm really passionate about saying to people that, you know, I'm not walking around saying, well, everybody can be cured and everybody's fatigue is mind body fatigue. And I think being balanced is really um, important. And some people do this work and they get an improvement and that's meaningful to them, but it's not a complete cure. And some people don't get anywhere with it, whether that's because it's not the right approach for them or because they need some support in in sort of tweaking what they're doing with it. There's a variety and, you know, there's people like me who've who've been so incredibly lucky to be completely cured. But but yeah, the minute I worked out that, no, these symptoms, at least some of them are being generated by my brain. That was me on the path to being back in control, having exercises I could try. There's always going to be other exercises you can do if if, if the first ones that you mm-hmm. try don't work for you. There's always different different approaches. There's always different people, yeah. you know, who've got different ideas around how to how to shift things. And, and it, yeah, it just gives you 
it gives you a bit of control back and and I think that is everything and it's such a wonderful thing to realize when you've been when you have suffered and I think that's the thing isn't it like fatigue and pain and all these other symptoms they make you suffer they're awful they are really really tough to live with and yeah yeah, so any little chance that 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 something can then help is just worth it's worth really giving it a good shot and at least then you'll know if you've given it everything and it hasn't worked you can say to yourself well I did try and it, you know it's very difficult then if, if things don't work but I do think for most people it's worth that risk yeah and and I think I I, I probably land a little bit more on the right in the hmm uh, <laughs> I feel like I I definitely think that um, the most symptoms are mind body. I, yeah. I think the brain, I think yeah. the brain produces. And I and I think amount. I think in so many ways that's my instinct. But I suppose that's where I'm kind of you know because I'm studying health psychology and it's so much like well what does the evidence say? And I think it's like. Yeah it's really important as well as we do need more I mean there is there is absolutely lots of evidence lots of research on on this so that's yeah it's it's but we need more we need more but but yeah I mean I I hope I hope we get to a point where we can be sitting there saying we've got that evidence backing it all up that yeah that most symptoms can be yeah can be tweaked and yeah got rid of yeah (laughs) um yes and 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 just kind of what you're saying about the the difference between searching for a physical diagnosis and waiting for the pill and the the surgery yeah. that's gonna um heal you and then you discover this mind body syndrome and all of a sudden it seems to me that there's just this hope there's just yeah. all of a sudden this yeah. like oh wow like you were saying there's something there's something in this I can do and control and I don't have to wait for oh my gosh it's just reminded me I ha- I I haven't been to the doctor since I healed so sev- several right. years now and yeah. I, I had to go to the doctor for something actual physical recently and I tried to schedule an appointment and there was st- there was so much stress around having to go to the doctor yeah. and um ab- around literally the scheduling and getting in and you know and like all, all this stuff and I it just had this flashback to how um st- I'm gonna say traumatic just the yeah. the the search for the diagnosis um, yeah. was for years and you know going to doctor after doctor and um and and that's just something that I'm really thankful in understanding mind body syndrome that um I get to let go of a, a, the majority of that yeah. stress of trying to get into somebody to tell me how to fix myself yeah yeah and I and I look back and I think that because I have some people sort of when I you know, I'm trying to talk a lot about these ideas and say they're worth a shot. And I get a lot of people saying, well, no, that's that's rubbish. And it doesn't it, it's it's uh, basically it's con men trying to kind of get money out of us. And and I understand all of that fear. But I look at this and I think I have been well for four over four years now. And I've got back the ability to ride a bike and I go hiking and I go swimming and I, I've been working. And and I think actually I if I had stayed with the, that those feelings of no, this is awful and it's not going to help me four and a half years ago that would have been four and a half nearly four and a half years of extra trauma and extra yeah. pain and extra fatigue and actually I my heart breaks if I think about what that would have been like yeah. um and I knew within myself I couldn't cope with it for much longer it was really breaking me and I think well it paid off for me and and it's it was so worth it and and sometimes these things do ask um a lot of courage and and it is it is uh, it's difficult to to try new things and to sort of really get your hopes up but but yeah, for so many people, it, it it really does pay off. And even I always try and say, even if it doesn't immediately get rid of physical symptoms, the work is all about getting in touch with yourself. And and yeah, it's it's only ever going to benefit you, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about that in in closing here. Um, yeah. Oh gosh, there's so many things I want to say, but. Um, <laughs> So if you were going to pick your top three tools mm-hmm. that you felt were most effective for you, I know we've already talked about writing. Um, it sounds like um, writing about how you were feeling a few times yeah. a day. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to hear about that. And and then without naming anything, did mm-hmm. you did you find that there were any tools that you tried and they didn't work? And I want to explain what I why I'm asking that. I think so. so I, I think, I think the thing for me was that, you know, there's, there's um, meditation is part of the process. And I think that for me, 
if I just meditated, that was never going to just lead to a, a recovery. And, and of course, I tried it anyway when I was ill. But but I think that that I mean, it can be fantastic. But I think that um, there were limits to how much that helped me, that side of things, I think. As in it wasn't enough on its own. Yeah. 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 OK. Yeah. So 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 I'm hearing meditation was was helpful. And yes. so was was it just free journaling or, or I think you- so yeah I think I think there I think what works initially was sort of setting a timer for 20 minutes and then maybe mm-hmm. writing anything and everything and then and then doing another 10 or 20 minutes of sort of more rational actually reflecting on what you've written and what you're feeling and and it's it's really good to have those two different parts of it yeah for me writing having hope at the end was mm-hmm. uh, yeah a huge part of it. I'm a Christian. So a lot of it had to do with like, how is God freeing me from the bondage of these, this thing I'm writing about. Um, so the writing and then, um, meditation and then any, any others that you found to be your favorites? The, the, the crucial thing for me was writing an evidence list. And, um, and, and so for me, what, what that was, was, Mm -hmm going back over the past few weeks or months and looking at any times that I'd done things that normally would, you know, produce symptoms that any times that it hadn't resulted in symptoms. Yeah. And I, I went into that thinking, well, this is stupid because I always have symptoms and I, I can hardly do anything. And I sat there and I covered this A4 sheet of paper and things that I was like, well, hang on, that's that. I don't remember. I'm not sort of thinking a lot about these things, but I, I just oh. found lots of little things. And and as soon as I think you've got that on paper in, in particular, I think that anytime you get symptoms, you can you can basically say to your brain, well, hang on, look, I've got this evidence list of times where you, you essentially you slipped up and you forgot to generate some symptoms <laughs> when I did something. And, yeah. and you don't need to do this anymore. And that was that that was almost the most important exercise that I did because I just I couldn't believe how many things and it was really little things. It might have been yes. like, you know, cleaning out a cupboard of something that I couldn't normally do something like that. But, you know, it could have been or, or it could have been standing up to prepare a meal and you ended up getting distracted and standing for a little bit longer than you normally would. And, and you were OK. And so it can be really, really little things. That's fine. But it starts to dismantle this idea that there's something physically, you know, there's something broken in your body. There's something, you know, that's gone wrong with your, with your cells. And it's, um, mm. it just is all evidence that it is your brain generating the pain. Um, and then somatic tracking. I, I didn't do that when I used curable, it wasn't sort of, I don't think they'd sort of brought out, I think they did a podcast on it. So I wasn't yeah. using that as part of my recovery, but I have used that since. And I had, in fact, mm-hmm. I think it was two years ago, I had a surgery, um, nothing related to sort of previous disability. And um, I ended up uh, in really quite a lot of pain from that. And it lingered. And I, initially I, I just sat there going, well, I've, I've had surgery. So there's obviously a reason for the pain. And then I had this moment where I thought, do you think maybe the same theories apply to this? And I, I'd, I'd actually developed a bit of a limp. And I went and did some somatic tracking and that was it. The limp stopped from that point on, it was gone. So, so I still, you know, if I, if I get a sort of things are getting a bit out of control with stress and I have a flare of something, a bit, a bit of a stress headache or just a, an afternoon of tiredness, I, I do use that. And I do find that extremely helpful. It's so simple and it's so straightforward and it's, yeah, it's very effective. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. That leads to my last question of what, what does life look like for you now in, in this post curable uh, healing journey and and how and actually how long was your journey of healing too how long did it take to get better do you mean or mm-hmm. well it was really the six weeks and I was really like 25 years of symptoms and then six weeks and that was it I knew it was completely completely and utterly and in fact that's really so fast. That. <laughs> it was it was so fast and it and it doesn't I do think it doesn't you know everybody is so different and for some people it they panic because it's not happening that fast for them, but right. it's so individual. Right. But I, I think it was about, I don't know, like two months out when I booked a trip to Egypt because I was like, right, I'm better. And I want to get on with things. And I just had to sort of jump into it. it. So it was, I mean, it was a bit risky looking back, but I was fine. You know, I was all oh. okay. But, but I, I, you know, it's, it's very hard to say what does life look like because life is just, I mean, life is challenging. And I, I think I always had an idea that if I recovered from all my problems, that life would be perfect. And it's not, it, it's a bit, it's been an adjustment to sort of say, no, that's not how life works at all. Life is hard and yeah. it's hard for everybody, but um, I am just, mm. uh, I just feel like I've won the lottery. I'm walking around a lot of the time and I try and really make sure I'm constantly looking back to what life was like before and making sure I'm appreciating this. And I don't want to take it yeah. for granted, but 
I'm studying something I love, which is health psychology, which is, you know, want to do something to do with helping, helping people in, in pain and with fatigue. Um, I've been working and I've had a lovely experience having, you know, it's my first job and I had a lovely team of people to work with and I got to do something where I was helping people. I've moved to a city that I love. I'm able to sort of do a full day of whether it's working or studying and then I've still got energy to do other things. I've been on holidays. I've, I mean, I'm just so lucky. I really You're living. Am. Yeah, I'm living, I'm living and I'm having fun. And I'm even, even the bad bits. I mean, it's a privilege, isn't it? To have energy to go out into the world and and, and it shapes you all the bad things as well. That kind of turns you into, you know, the person that you, that you become is it all comes from the bad things as well as the good. So it's those opportunities to be stretched. And um, I'm just, I, I, I honestly, I've just so lucky and I've, I, I feel like I'm still rebuilding. It's still, it's a process, but um yeah there's so many amazing opportunities have come up and it's incredible yeah even before this call even um even just the fact that you're doing construction and showing up here <laughs> is is um is but, I, but I'm so but, but that's the thing it's like I almost have a problem with being too busy I'm you know I've got got builders in and I've got my <laughs> course and I've had my job and I'm doing some volunteering and then yeah it's just because I want to I want to live so much I want to cram in so much and and I am at the point where I'm thinking maybe maybe when life comes down again a bit I need to reflect on that and 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 you know mm-hmm. things could do with being a bit quieter but but it's hard when you just want to to grab every opportunity I think and do everything yeah, so. yeah. that balance but also taking joy in just what you yeah. have you know when you make a decision to go forth with something just enjoy it while you yeah. can and yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time and for, um, I don't know, just taking a break out of your busy life to encourage <laughs> everybody um, out there that has similar symptoms or even completely different symptoms just to share your journey. Um, as you yeah. know, it goes a long ways. Yes. Yeah, no, it's really good to really good to do this. So thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, all right, everybody. I'm going to um, stop recording and I will see you guys next week. Bye.